how Google tracks Android device users before they've opened any app. Really interesting stuff that really dives into you know, the kind of privacy you can expect on just a regular Android device. So this is from a professor at Trinity College Dublin. He's actually done a lot of other interesting stuff, Doug Leith. Um, I've covered some of his research in the past. And he found that Google tracks Android users even before they open their first app. And this is done through various mechanisms, and I'll touch on those in a second. The important thing about all of this is that there's really no way to leave any of these forms of tracking without, you know, a lot of workarounds and DIY stuff. So in terms of the tracking, the first thing is a DSID cookie, which is what he says is almost certainly the primary method Google uses to link analytics and advertising events, such as ad clicks, to individual users. This cookie is pretty much almost like a super cookie in a way, and it exists on device. And then this is combined with a Google Android ID, which is a device identifier that cannot be removed once it's created. And with these two things, they collect data on you as a user without your consent or without any kind of opt-out option that exists. So the Google Android ID, to dive a little bit more into that, is linked to a Google account and created after the first connection made to the device by Google Play services. It continues to send data about the device back to Google even after the user logs out of their Google account. And the only way to remove it and its data is to factory reset the device, which if you're wondering, well, wouldn't I just get a new one? I believe the answer to that is yes. Obviously, the researcher says that this is by itself a privacy concern and has should have people worried at least. Um, and the second thing that he says is that there is uh, no way to opt out of this or having them run in the first place. So there really is such little oversight over all of this kind of stuff on a regular Google Android device. And we'll talk about some alternatives in a second. This is also really bad timing for Google because there was the recent controversy over the Android system safety core thing, which I believe we also covered on this podcast, which is a process that scans user, user images for explicit content without their consent and users uh, express frustration over no transparency or ability to really opt out of this and it was just kind of installed on their devices so um, a lot of thoughts on this one I have said it before and I'll say it again personally I recommend what if someone asks me what phone I should buy the two things I typically say for most people is probably just an iPhone or a Google Pixel those tend to have the fewest amount of concerns when you start comparing them to their competition the iPhone has the advantage of maybe having slightly better privacy and security on its face than the Google device, but the Google device will allow those users potentially to do more and have access to more third-party tools that don't exist on the iOS side of things. But it really depends on the user, and I think that you're kind of just splitting hairs. Those are kind of the two recommendations. With that said, I do think overall, from what I've seen, the way that Android works and the way that Google collects this kind of data on Android devices does have quite a bit less transparency and is a bit more invasive than what I've seen on the Apple side of things, which Apple does very similar things as Google does in this situation, but it just doesn't seem quite as prolific as what we see on the Google front. Now, obviously, if you want to avoid all of these big tech companies, you need to use an operating system that doesn't include big tech companies and doesn't have these concerns. So um, if that is the route you want to go, then you probably want to look at custom operating systems on the Android side of things that either use something like micro G or some other implementation of services that would allow you um, to not allow Google to get this kind of data from your device. But a really crazy story and it's, you know, I already hear a lot of the comments um, from the podcast saying, well, Google, yeah, Google collects your data. Duh. And it's like, yeah, we understand that. But knowing a little bit better how they do it is really important for mitigations, understanding what can't be mitigated, and also sharing with people exactly how it works. One thing is to sound like the crazy guy across the street pointing, you know, at the sky and going, guys, the sky is green, <laughs> you know? The other, another one is actually like proving that the sky is green. Now, kind of a bad analogy because this is the perspective of people thinking there's nothing wrong and that we're crazy for thinking that there's lots of privacy issues in the world. Um, but again, uh, rather than us trying to, you know, be like the, the, oh, the sky's green guys and it sounds like we're just making crap up, um, actually citing research, giving evidence and providing them to people and saying, look, this is why there are actual legitimate privacy concerns and here are actual solutions that would resolve this makes us a much more tangible and realistic fight that we can have and uh, get other people on board with. So um, these stories are super important in normalizing privacy and educating people about privacy. You just watched a clip from our main podcast, Surveillance Report, where we talk about privacy and security news every single week to keep you all updated on the newest threats and how to prevent them from happening to you. 
If you wanna learn more and stay updated, check it out here on the screen or in the description. And there's also an audio only version that you can also find down in the description. We'll see you there. Thanks for watching.